You are welcome to this brief introduction to the New Testament book of First Thessalonians, intended for teachers and serious Bible readers. Let's get into it. The author is believed to be Saul of Tarsus, also known as the Apostle Paul. He would have composed this in about the year 50 of the Common Era, when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, thus it is one of the earliest surviving Christian documents. The text as we have received it is derived from three ancient papyrus manuscripts, number 30, copied in the 3rd century, number 46, copied about the year 200, and papyrus 65, also in the 3rd century. The great unseal manuscripts of Sinaiticus in the 4th century and Alexandrinus and Vaticanus of the 5th century and a score of other ancient documents, both in Greek and in translated versions. Nearly all scholars and historians attribute this book to the Apostle Paul, considering it to be quite authentic. Marcion, a Christian Gnostic who died in about the year 160 CE, listed First Thessalonian in his canon or list of authentic scriptures. The Moratorian canon from about the year 170 lists First Thessalonians amongst books believed to be written by apostles of Jesus. Likewise, all of the early church councils recognized it as an authentic letter from Paul, and all denominations to this day include it in their Bible. The recipients were first century Christian believers residing in Thessalonica of Macedonia province of the Roman Empire. The city, Thessalonica itself, was the largest city and capital of Macedonia, a self-governing Roman free city. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, recounts how Paul and his co-workers had been illegally arrested, beaten, jailed, and asked to leave Philippi. And chapter 17 recounts how they arrived in Thessalonica, spent three weeks, or possibly three Sabbaths, proving from the Jewish scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah. However, after jealous synagogue leaders fomented a riot, Paul fled to Athens before rejoining his co-workers in Corinth, where this letter may have been written. Its purpose. Because Paul's team had to leave the city so soon, they had not had enough time to teach the new believers well. Thus they wrote this letter to address their needs and questions such as these, to affirm their conversion by their active faith, love, and hope, to strengthen their faith in spite of continuing persecution, to warn against pagan sexual standards or deviancy, to urge them to remain productive citizens who supply theirs and others' needs to explain what will become of believers who die before Jesus' return, and to instruct them in basic Christian spirituality. We offer the following as a teaching outline for those who do not have their own. Begin with the greeting, and as main point one, recalling the believers' faith, hope, and love. 2. Reviewing the Apostles' gentle ministry. 3. Assuring them of the Apostles' continued care. 4. Living in a way that pleases God. 5. Awaiting the Lord's coming. 6. Maintaining an active spiritual life. And lastly, blessing fellow believers with a final greeting. We also recommend 
that you view the Bible Project video on YouTube introducing the book of 1 Thessalonians. May God bless you richly, teach you, enable you to walk in a manner pleasing to Him, and to teach others to do the same.